NAM, NAM, or the National Association of Music Merchants is an expo, convention, whatever, what have you, that happens every year in Anaheim, California. It's really big and it's really cool. Basically from the smallest manufacturers to the biggest boutique manufacturers that you can think of, vendors, everything, everyone is there. It's kind of overwhelming really, and it's a really good time. I highly suggest you go if you ever have the chance to. Now, I didn't go to this year's expo, but I sort of just wanted to make a video of highlights of really cool base things that I saw from social media and websites forums and whatnot that I just wanted to make y'all aware of and let's go through it together. But of course, because I wasn't physically there, this is really hard to describe unless you've been to NAMM. There are so many companies there and even when you are physically there, it's really easy to miss a lot. But when you're not there, it's even easier to miss a lot. So of course, this isn't a comprehensive guide to everything based that happened at NAM 2024. This again is just sort of a summary of highlights of base related things that I have seen since then. And yeah, let's just jump right into it. Now, first up we have Ibanez. And if you know Ibanez, they usually have one of the most stacked lineups year after year for new products. They're not afraid to branch out. They're not afraid to go ahead and make their own trends and things like that. And I have a lot of respect for the company. And starting off, we have the GWB 25TH Gary Willis Signature Base. Now, he's had a few signature bases before, but this one is super cool to me and something that like, hey, I think I need to really try one of these just to at least play it and see what it feels and sounds like. As you can see from here, it has this beautiful silver wave burst finish that just looks so crazy and so cool to me. <laughs> you have an Ash Body Bartolini GWB Bridge Pickup and a Bartolini NTBT 2 band EQ, along with a beautiful fretless three piece maple neck that has an ebony fretboard and these really cool looking Godo machine heads. I think these tuners are the coolest looking things. And I bet they're super comfortable too. And not only that, I feel it's something where you can really have that precise tuning down to a science that I really like. Next up is the SDGB1, the Steve DiGiorgio of Testament and Death Signature Bass. And this thing looks freaking awesome amazing. <laughs> you have an Ash and Okume wing body with a flame maple top that comes in this super killer dark moss burst finish. That thing is to die for. You have Nordstrand big single pickups in it as well as a three band EQ. Then for the killer looking neck, you have a neck through nine piece maple bubinga panga panga neck that has an ebonol fretboard too. And y'all, this thing is a beast. God. Then moving on, we have the EHB lineup, which they have added a whole lot of new models to. Starting off with the EHB 1505S, it is a 30 inch short scale five string bass that has African mahogany body with a poplar burl top and this beautiful dragon eye burst finish, Nordstrand big split pickups and a nine piece panga panga and walnut neck. Then you have the EHB 1505S MS, which is a multi-scale <laughs> short scale bass. So cool to me. 32 to 30 inch scale with an African African mahogany body, popper burl top, and a floor natural finish. Nordstrand big split pickups, and again, a nine piece panga panga walnut neck. And that's just two of the EHB models. They've released a whole lot of other ones that I definitely suggest checking out. Then you have something like this, which is the SRD 900F a fretless beauty in my opinion. You have an Akume body with an exotic maple top and a brown topaz burst finish. Nordstrand big break pickups, Ibanez two band EQ with piezo control, as well as a five piece maple and walnut neck with a fretless panga panga fretboard. And those really cool sound holes that are pointing towards you as you play. So I'm really curious that acoustically, if there's any sort of difference or maybe if it adds any sort of volume acoustically, not that it really matters once everything's plugged in, but still really cool, really weird too. <laughs> then the SRM S720, which is a 34 and a half to 33 and a half multi-scale bass and a Kume body with a blue chameleon finish, Fishman Fluence pickups and electronics, as well as a five piece maple and walnut neck with a panga panga fretboard that also has a five string version too with a 35 and a half to 34 inch scale length. Then the SR1420B. Now look at this thing. This looks like a race car to me. Like that's definitely the vibe they're going for with it. And I think it works super well. You have an African mahogany body with flame maple top, Caribbean green finish, Nordstrand big break pickups, five piece panga panga purple heart neck with a flame maple fretboard that comes in four string, five string and six string variants. Then the SR300 EDX, which has a Nayato body, Ivan has power span dual coil pickups, as well as a five piece maple and walnut neck with a Jatoba fretboard that comes in this really cool black ice frozen finish or the cosmic blue frozen. Oh, 
and both four and five string variants too. Then moving on to the new BTBs for the year, they have the BTB 7M6, which is a 35 to 35.5 neck through multi-scale seven string bass. Whoa, <laughs> it's a lot. You have an Ash and Okume wing body with a booming atop, Ibanez T1 pickups and an Ibanez 3 band EQ, then a nine piece maple panga panga walnut neck and rosewood fretboard. Just, wow, that is one hell of a bass. And this has to be the coolest bass Ibanez comes out with this year. And that's the BTB 25TH5, which is an Akume wing body with a silver blizzard matte finish. I think this finish alone is the coolest thing I've seen in a while. But man, it just looks like it works so well together. You have Nordstrand Big Split pickups, five piece maple and walnut neck with a rosewood fretboard, and it comes in five and six string variants. And what's really cool is Ibanez brought back the TMB lineup, which is awesome. Even though it's only two models, it's still really cool to see it back. Starting off, you have the TMB 400TA, which has a poplar body with a Tamo ash top that has a cosmic blue starburst finish, which... That's a good looking bass. <laughs> Ibanez's has his own Dynamix PJ pickup set with their own two band EQ and a roasted maple neck with a bound rosewood fretboard as well. And then finally the TMB 105, very simple and straightforward. You have a poplar body with a black finish. Ibanez Dynamics PJ pickups, their two band EQ, as well as the maple neck with a Jatoba fretboard. Now going to our friends over at Dingwall, they have something that's really cool to me. Now they have the Super P, which is an absolutely incredible bass. I've gotten to play two of them before and they are so, Good. But of course, they're the ones that are going for a lot of money. So they decided to make this Super P as an import version, much like they have the Get Good series for the NG2s and NG3s. And I love that. So this is the SP1, the Super P1. Now there is no official information yet. And the ones that they had on the showroom floor were also prototypes. But from the Dingwall Base Owners Facebook group, I saw this from one of their dealers. And they said there's no firm production date for these yet, but now targeting Q1 2025. The, the final price is not known yet, but it's targeted to be about $2,000 USD. Specs will be alder body, maple neck, pal ferro fretboard, and a passive PJ configuration. String spacing at the bridge will be 18 millimeters on the five string and 19 millimeters on the four string. Same scale length as the Canadian built supermodels. And with the initial four colors, you got Ducati white, metallic black, dark candy green, and a three tone sunburst. And yeah, I really wanna play one of these because I bet they are amazing. Again, I love Dingwalls. They are super comfortable and just so much quality, even their import line. So maybe there'll be a little production like a little earlier than Q1 2025, but we'll just find out, I guess. Next up is Dan Electro, actually. Uh, I don't really know a lot about Dan Electro. I think I've played one or two of their bases before in the past. I don't really recall, but they had this really cool red hot Longhorn there. Really weird looking bass but something I really wanna try. They tout it as a unique take on the vintage classic. The semi-hollow version has a single F-hole and features a 29.75 inch scale and its lipstick pickups are high output for lots of attack. You don't really think about uh, Dan Electro basses when it comes to high pe output pickups or lots of attack, but that's really cool. And <laughs> I wanna make some metal on this bass. Next up from ESP, unfortunately they have only announced two basses for 2024, but eh. Starting off, you have the MLB4 Mike Leone from Soulfly Signature Bass. You have a Swamp Ash body, a five piece Wingate and Purple Heart neck with an ebony fretboard and Nordstrand Big Split pickups. And this thing's pretty cool looking. I, it's not my personal cup of tea to be honest, but it's still pretty damn cool. As well as the FL4, which is Fred Lequeck. He is the former bassist for Dragon Force, his signature bass, which is really cool and really weird looking. I just appreciate how different it is. You have an alder body, five piece maple and purple heart neck with an ebony fretboard and one EMG 35P pickup. I imagine this thing is meant to do one thing and one thing only, and that is play heavy riffs. And I'm all about that. Then I saw something from one of the small builders there from LEH Guitars out of Portland and man these just look really cool. You have the Jetstream and the Voyager and I don't know what it is about these but they are so rad. And then on both of them you can actually see that there's not only knobs but they have these cool little sliders too for the EQ and I think that's the raddest thing. Then Ashdown was there with their super awesome roasted series of bases which are their import line that looks so Cool, friend of the channel, Johnny Dibble, put up a video where he demoed all four of the models, and I definitely suggest looking at them. These are bases that are under $400, but for some reason, there seems like there's no one in the States, no dealers in the States selling them yet, which I feel like is a missed opportunity, and I really wanna see these in the States soon. You have the Saint, the Saint Soap, 
the Lowrider as well as the Capri in a bunch of different really cool colors. And they all have a poplar body and those roasted maple necks. And they seem like really awesome, inexpensive bases that I would love to just go ahead and just mod the hell out of one of them. Then there's a new brand called Cream Guitars, which kind of seems like to me they came out of nowhere. But man, they introduced their new line of bases that just look crazy and I really want to try them too. Sano Jano made a video with those guys from the NAMM showroom floor and I definitely suggest checking that out because it is so cool. And these are some bases that will be expensive, but man, they definitely seem like they're worth it. Then from the good friends over at Sterling by Music Man, they brought back these short scale stingrays that have a Nioto body, they have neodymium humbucker, as well as a roasted maple neck with a roasted maple fretboard for the Fiesta red finish and a rosewood fretboard for the Toluca Lake blue finish. And what's crazy is a long time ago, Ernie Ball made a model called the Sterling. Really cool base, a lot of people really like them. They have stopped making that since, but now Sterling by Music Man, their import line has sort of come back out with the Sterling but in a completely new configuration. You have a Swamp Ash body as well as one humbucker and no preamp at all. It's just a simple volume and tone and that's it. It's a completely passive bass and it has a maple neck too and it's a very simple and very straightforward instrument which is completely different than what the old Sterlings used to be. So I'm really intrigued about these and they also are apparently limited edition too. So I'm just like, wait a second. What are we doing? From the homies over at Dark Glass, they announced their incredibly anticipated bass combos that I know a lot of people have been waiting for for a long time. Uh, really cool that they decided to do this. There are two different kinds. There's four new combos all together, two different versions of two different combos. You have the Microtubes 500 combo, which is all analog. Essentially, think of it as a Microtubes 500 head, but more now that it's in a combo form. And it comes in a 210 and 112 variant. Then there is the Infinity 500 combo variants, which super cool. Digital 500 watt amplifier, sort of like the Exponent 500 watt head, but now as a combo complete with presets, compression, onboard octave effect, and MIDI control too. So there's a lot and that's super cool and I cannot wait to get my hands on these, especially the Infinity one. I'm really curious as to how well the digital one's gonna really stack up. Then from Sanzip, these madmen decided we're gonna make the ultimate preamp it looks like <laughs> and that is the XB driver. Now from what they said, they integrated key elements from their most popular products. So the Sanzip bass driver DI, the pair driver DI, the Q-strip and the Doug Pinnock Ultra Bass 1000 and condense them all into a single sleep machine, which is really cool because there is an option to mix your two channels that are there, and I love that. And this is something I'm really hoping to get my hands on because I feel there's a lot that you can do with this particular pedal, and it's gonna be super exciting. Then next up from Schecter, they released two new models, including the Charles Bear 2 signature model, Super cool to see other YouTubers and just really good bass players getting signature models. You have an Ash body that has a neck through five piece walnut and Paduk neck, as well as EMG humbuckers and an active EQ. Then you have the Justin Beck V signature bass. This has a Swamp Ash body, Hard Rock Maple neck and fretboard and Schecter USA Monster Tone PJ pickups too. Then for Sire, we have some incredibly <laughs> insane looking new bases. I think Sire is sort of one of those companies that once they hit the ground running, they have not stopped since. And they've continuously evolved and just made some incredible instruments for not a lot of money. And that's super cool to see them continue to do that. Starting off, you have the Marcus Miller V10, which has a Swamp Ash body, Poplar Burl top, Super J Revolution pickup set, as well as Marcus Miller's Heritage 3 band preamp too. And look at these finishes, my God. And now they've introduced the Z series too, which is their foray basically into making their own version of the Music Man Stingray. And I think they're gonna do really well with this. Starting with the Z3, which has a street price of $450. You have a mahogany body, maple neck with a rosewood or maple fretboard, Sire Standard MM pickup, and a Marcus Heritage 3 band preamp that comes in both four string and five string versions too, with a plethora of really pretty colors. Then the Z7 series with a street price of $700, basically like the Z3 with an extra single coil in the neck position that has both four and five string versions too. Then you have the F10, which definitely seems like one of their top of the line bases, coming in at $1,600, which is pretty expensive for a sire, 
but I'm also assuming that the quality is gonna be top notch on these. You have a swamp ash body with a solid poplar burl top, as well as the Marcus Pure H Revolution pickup set with a hard maple and mahogany five piece neck. And I bet this thing plays absolutely impeccably. And this isn't normally my thing, but the GB5 series, looks pretty cool. Acoustic basses that are super thin. It's an electric acoustic bass, so it's not really an acoustic bass. I don't care for acoustic basses anyway. Really, if you're gonna have an acoustic bass, you might as well plug it in, but this seems like a great way to do that. You have a mahogany body with a solid spruce top as well as a mahogany three-piece neck that has a rosewood fretboard. Then a piezo pickup with three-band EQ too. And then finally, we have the U7 series, which is the full-scale version of their U5 short-scale bass. And it comes in a lightweight alder body with hard maple neck and fretboard and Marcus's super modern PJ pickup set in these amazing colors. <laughs> and one of the things that really stood out to me from the show is this really awesome Decision P bass from Reverend. And it's so weird and so cool to me. You have a Karina body with a five piece maple and walnut neck, a roasted maple or rosewood fretboard, then Reverend's own P-Blade neck and Jazz Bomb bridge pickups. And man, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the color, possibly. It comes in two colors, but that man, this like periwinkle looks so good. And I've heard for years now, how good reverend bases are. And it's something where it's like, maybe this is the year I actually try one because something is speaking to me about this instrument. And that's about it for the main coverage of NAMM stuff that I was able at least to come up with. Now again, I didn't go and there's also some cool stuff I didn't even cover, like the Black Haze 2 from EBS or the Blooms from Earthquaker Devices. Trickfish has some really cool looking pedals come out this year that I'm excited to try, especially because I just found out they're in Houston. And yeah, as a fellow Texan, it's like, oh, I definitely want to support these guys and see what cool stuff they got going on. But if you guys want to see some more NAM coverage, definitely go ahead Ahead and look some up and subscribe to Sano Jano because I know he's gonna be coming out with some videos from the showroom floor that he took too and I'm very excited to see those I already turned my notifications on for him and everything and speaking of thank you guys so much for watching and seriously thank you so much for subscribing commenting sharing my videos and so much more I truly do appreciate it and of course as always a humongous thank you to these beautiful people right here my patreon supporters Mwah. We all thank you so much for watching as always. Let me know what awesome stuff that you saw at NAMM that I didn't even get to cover or really what things you're excited to see in this upcoming year. I'm really excited to try out those new Sire Music Man bases just to see, all right, all their other bases are really cool. So I have no doubt that they'll be just on fire. <laughs> but y'all, thank you again so much as always. And of course, no matter where in the world you are, stay safe, practice that bass, drink your water, and I'll see y'all next time.